Hello again everyone, welcome back to DIY The Art of Wood, I'm Jeremy. In today's video I'm going to be going over some additional steps to complete the electrical rough-in on this project as well as make some of the finished connections so that we can fire up these lights. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I think if we can see these lights function, it may help you visualize how circuits like this work, how all the wires connect together, and just help you visualize that in case you want to tackle a project like this yourself. The other finish work that needs to be completed here today is I need to install and mount the conduit that I'm going to run the wires in, the junction boxes where I'm going to make the connections, and the main reason for that is the height where that conduit and those junction boxes are is going to determine where I mount the wainscoting. And as a little added bonus here, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of what the wainscoting is going to be. That is this standing seam steel paneling here. It's going to look really great. So it's going to sit right about here. Then the conduit will run here. The junction boxes will be here. And then I'm going to build a chase around it to hide all the, the conduit and the wiring and everything. And to have a separation between the steel and the paneling here. And I'm very excited to finish up the electrical work today because as soon as I'm finished with that, I can start installing the wainscoting. And that will give us a really good idea of what this finished project is going to look like. So, let's dig in, finish up the electrical, and then we can get started on the steel paneling. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the key factor here is all the connections, or most of the connections really, are going to happen right here because this is where I'm pulling power from, and this is also where I'm pulling neutral from. So everything needs to kind of culminate right here at this location, so I will need to put a junction box here. And what I'm using for the junction boxes are these shallow electrical outlet boxes are real shallow it's about three quarters of an inch deep and the reason that i'm using this is i do need a little bit of room in here to work to make all the connections but i wanted something small that would be easily hidden in an electrical chase if i use one big huge you know junction box i'd have to build this enormous electrical chase around it to, to hide all this so i'll mount these um, what i'm going to need to do too is drill a few holes in them to, to run the electrical wire into uh, I'm going to mount this right over the hole so that this wire comes right through the back. And then I'll run conduit right up to the sides here. I'll probably have to drill some holes for that too. But. Oh, be careful doing this. Don't hold your hand over it like this. And then drill into it because you'll probably poke it right into your hand. Uh, I should probably actually be drilling, setting this on something and drilling into it, but I don't have anything here and I'm trying to hold it so you can see it on camera. See the risks I put myself at for you? <laughs> but yeah, you wanna, if you're going to be stupid like me and hold the thing while you're drilling it, keep your hands away from the line of fire when the drill bit pokes through. Okay.
Okay, so that's it for that. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. The basic idea is just protect the wire. And protecting that wire is especially important for what I'm going to be doing around it and that building that chase. That'll protect me from accidentally shooting a nail or a screw into it and causing a major problem later. So next, I just need to make my connections. I'll walk you through those, temporarily hook up the lights, fire up the circuit, and then we'll see how that works. And hopefully once I make all these final connections here, temporarily hook up the lights and flip that light switch on and this light comes on, the light above your head will come on too and all this will start to make sense for you and you'll be ready to tackle a project like this yourself. So stick with me here, follow along, and I'll run you through the next steps. Okay, so I went ahead and made a few of the connections already, namely the connection here at the switch and then also down here and I'll aim the camera down so I can talk about what I have going on down here. So basically down here we have our actual hot lead coming in which I tied into this piece here. So there will be an outlet down here but for now just for these testing purposes and to show you how this works I just used some wire nuts and connected this yellow Romex that pops up right here to the hot and the neutral. So definitely stay tuned to this project for the, the final video on the electrical portion of this project where I'll show you all the little finished details and how to make some of these connections at the light switches and the electrical outlets. But for now, we're just going to focus on kind of the bulk of this, how the wiring works, how the connections work, and then I'll be showing you how it lights these lights. What I have here is this wire that's coming up is the one that leads down to the power that will ultimately connect to the electrical outlet for hot and neutral. So the first thing I need to do is strip back some of the outer jacketing. So right now what's happening is this black line coming out of this Romex here is going to be our hot line and, and black typically is hot. So we'll make that connection first. Let's grab a wire nut. And we'll connect the two black leads together. So I have the black hot coming up from down below and then the black line that's going over to the switch right here. One thing that I find is kind of helpful doing this is go ahead and just kind of twist those together like that. Then take your wire nut and screw that on. And you don't have to worry about getting this 100% tight right now because we want to make sure everything works before we really kind of button things up. So I have the hot coming up right here. Have the, the black lead that goes over to the switch right here, which basically this just interrupts this line, the switch. That's what that does. So I have black coming to the switch, hot. And then now this white wire, which is normally neutral, now actually becomes a hot wire as well coming back. So we have hot going in and then hot coming back right here. So normally white is neutral, black is hot, but now because we've put this switch in place, which basically just kind of opens and closes this circuit, if this switch wasn't there, this would just pretty much just be a loop coming back around where the hot would just go up and come right back down, which is exactly what it's doing, but it's being interrupted by the switch. So it opens and closes that circuit. So it allows electricity to flow from this wire to this wire and come back. So what you'll want to do is somehow mark that this wire now is actually hot. And one of the ways that that's done is you can take like a black Sharpie and color the end of it black, just like that. So if anyone comes behind you that is an electrician, they'll know that this white wire is actually hot. And I'll take it one step further and take a little bit of tape and actually label these. And this will help you as a beginner too to keep these straight as you're making all your connections so you know what's going on here. So I'll take that and write something like hot from switch. So that's 
pretty straightforward there. So now that we have hot coming up, going to the switch, coming back down to here, we need to send it this way to connect through the lights. So again, strip back the outer jacketing. Go ahead and strip back the shielding on these. I'll well just do them all while I'm here. I'm going to need to connect them all at some point anyway. So again, we have the, the hot coming back down from the switch, so I'll want to connect that right here to this black lead that's going to the individual lights. So what I'm going to do here is go back to the traditional convention of black being hot. So the only possibly confusing spot is just this one short lead coming off of the switch that's white but colored black. Again, we'll just twist these together. Okay, moving on down the line. So now, you don't want to have too much to deal with here because these boxes are kind of small. So I'm going to trim this back quite a bit actually. And this one I'll just stuff kind of back in the wall somewhat. Always good to have a little extra where you can spare it. And this little tool that I'm using here is called the cable ripper. It helps you do some of the prep work on this on this wire here and I will put a link in the description if you want to check this thing out. It was only like five bucks I think. Worth every penny. That is for sure. Might have been ten dollars, I don't remember now. Either way, good tool to have. Okay, so again we have hot here. So this one that's coming out the middle is this one here that goes up to the light. So I want to connect that to the hot. And then this one that's coming out of this conduit here is the hot that leads up to that that light up there. So I will twist these three together. And this is where actually twisting them together comes in very handy. Not too difficult to get two together in a wire nut, but sometimes trying to get three together is a little tricky. But if you can kind of pre-twist them a little bit, they'll stay together and it'll make putting that wire nut on a lot easier. Kind of get that twisted together. Oh, it's sticking out a little too long there. You want them to kind of be even about at the end too. And we'll twist that together like that. So for all intents and purposes, we now have hot going to the lamps. Next, we need to get neutral. And it's basically the same idea to where we'll just tie all three of these together because the neutral, the white here is this, and I still need to make this connection, but is the neutral coming up from down below. Actually, let's go back and make this connection. So, see we have this white here, and then this white here coming out the middle is the one that goes down there that will connect to the electrical outlet later once I get to that stage. Just have it temporarily hooked up right now, but for our purposes, that's good enough for today. And I might as well just do the grounds while I'm here too. I was fighting with these wires is not a lot of fun, but it's part of it. Okay, so now we have neutral and ground coming back here. So I'll get the grounds together again over here. And nip off the end so they're nice and even there and they go into the wire nut a little better. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is just get our three neutral wires together, which I've got one here, it goes over to that lamp. The one coming out the middle here is up here and then this one is the one that shoots down here and then on down. I 
And when you twist these together, you want to twist in the direction that you're going to be twisting the wire nut on. You know, righty tighty, lefty loosey, or clockwise. So that when you twist the wire nut on, it doesn't loosen up your pre-twisted wires here, that it just kind of, if anything, tightens them up a little bit. Oops, I need to grab some more wire nuts. All right, found some more wire nuts. Okay, so that is good enough for now. Okay, so before I light this circuit up and we flip the switch and see that the lights come on, I'll go over how this circuit is wired one last time so that when I flip the switch, you can imagine yourself as the electricity flowing through the wires and illuminating the lights. So I'll start at the bottom again. Aim the camera down ever so slightly. So what we have here at the bottom is our electricity coming into this circuit, which is this, a pair of wires here. You have a black and a white, so a hot and a neutral. Now when I'm actually done with this, instead of these just being connected here with wire nuts, there will be an electrical outlet there instead, but it's basically the same idea. I'm just bypassing the electrical outlet right now just so we can test it out because I'm not ready to finish up down here yet. But anyway, we have our hot coming in on a black. We have a, a wire nut connecting the black wire in this yellow row mix, which shoots into the wall and pops up back out here. Pick this back up again a little bit. So that connection, again, the hot comes in, connects to our yellow Romex here, and pops out of the wall here on this black line coming out of the yellow Romex in the wall. So the hot is then connected with a wire nut to this other black line, and the white Romex is in this conduit here, which then comes up and pops out over here. So I have hot right here. And I'll show you that right here. See, that's hot. I've got nothing down here. So that's because this switch is in the off position, so the electricity is not flowing through the switch. As soon as I flip the switch, I'll have electricity on both sides. So hot comes in on the black, flows through the switch, back out the white, comes back through the pipe here, and pops out right here. So this is hot. Not right now because the switch is off, but this is our hot line, which we marked with tape, colored the end of it black so that that indicates that this is actually hot. Jumps across here with this wire nut to the black wire and the yellow Romex that pops out over here. So now we have hot right here. And then we have our two black leads that run to each light here. So we have one that pops up right here right here, and then same idea down on the far end there, the black is hot down on that end. And then the opposite coming back, we have our white neutral pops out here, white neutral that comes through here, and the three connect here. So we have our neutrals here coming from the lights, and a white neutral shooting back back in here, popping out right here, connected to this wire, got these two connected together, shoots in the wall, on down, the wall, and then connects to our neutral wire here, which goes on out. So this circuit right now is wired in parallel. And there's basically two different ways to, to wire something like this. You could do series or parallel. And if any of you have experience with Christmas tree lights, you, you know the difference. Most Christmas tree lights are wired in series and that means that the hot comes in up to the light and down in up to the light and down and then finally catches the neutral on the way back and out. And the problem with that is is if you have a problem at any one of the lights in the string the whole string goes out because it's flowing the electricity is actually flowing through it. In parallel on the other hand each light has its own hot feed and neutral feed so if one light goes out or there's a problem with one light, it doesn't matter, the rest will still stay on. But before I flip this switch, I want to mention just a few things. First off, you may be wondering what's going on right here. Just a few minutes ago, 
there was a light socket and a, and a light bulb here and now I've got an electrical outlet and a lamp plugged in. Two reasons for that. First off, believe it or not, I had a brand new light socket up here and it was defective. I went to test the circuit out, that light came on, this one did not. So I just chucked that in the trash and hooked up an electrical outlet instead for us to test it out. It'll work just the same because I have a lamp plugged in so as soon as electricity flows through this circuit, this light will come on and so will the back one back there. But that also gave me a great idea that this is an even better way to test this out because if you have one of these, it's a circuit tester, I'll bring it in a little closer for you. You plug this into an electrical outlet and it will tell you if it's wired correctly or not. And there's a little diagram here that tells you what the different lights mean. They'll light up in a different series and each series means something different. But what we're looking for on this one is correct, which is the middle light, orange light, and the far right one, which is red. So these two need to light up if this circuit is wired correctly. So not only will we be able to test out that the circuit works and the lights come on, we'll also know that it's wired correctly too. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and light this thing up. We'll see both lights, the lamp here, and then the far light come on. We'll see this come on, and we should get the orange and red light indicating this circuit is wired correctly. Okay, so without further ado, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's light this thing up. Drum roll, please. And... And there we have it, there shall be light. <laughs> Both lights have come on and if I go here to my circuit tester, I have the orange and the red light indicating this is wired correctly. Now, if you wanna take the extra time and hook up another electrical outlet down on the other one so you can plug your circuit tester into it, go ahead and do that, especially if this is your first time wiring a circuit like this and you want to be absolutely sure everything's hooked up correctly. I'm not going to do that this time, I'm confident that that light is wired the exact same way that this one is, so I don't think that's necessary. But don't let that stop you from taking that extra step, just to be sure. Now all that's really left is just kind of buttoning this up a little bit, making sure all, our, all my wire nuts are tight. I will wrap them with a little bit of electrical tape just to kind of secure those a little bit more and try to stuff these in the boxes. And basically what I'm going to do to cover them up is just use a blank outlet cover and I'll show you that in a few minutes. And yeah, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up and I can move on to starting to install some of the steel panels. All right, 